Hey guys, welcome back to Hawkeye Star Rail. In today's video, we have round five of the Tamias PvP Cup. Now, as always with these videos, Tamias does all the work. I just commentate. So I'll leave a link to Tamias' channel and also all the other content creators involved in this one. I'll leave a link to their channels in the description and the pinned comment as well. Please go ahead and show them some love. But I'm going to shut up now and let's get into the tournament. Thought member four, Hoka Kakamon, had gotten rid of most of the society members. I didn't have a lot of hope for this. Look who's here. Buzz. Madam Herta. Open zone. Hello everyone, Tamias here, and welcome to another Honkai Star Rail Tamias Cup, where we turn the PvE Memory Chaos into a PvP game mode by pitting content creators against each other, and this time, we have a very, very special one, because with the release of Memory Chaos 12, things are going to be extra, extra spicy, and of course, on one side, we have, that's right, Mr. Poke and God Doggo, who's been here before, and this is their team, in, oh my god, absolutely hilarious, and on the other team, we have, of course dreamy alongside destiny and this is their team band <laughs> oh my god the quality of these teams are just absolutely insane and of course if you guys don't know uh, check out the pride win site we are using the draft tools but with a twist because rum may as well as Shreyi has just been released so this is going to be a memory chaos cup with both teams able to choose these two characters however again like always we always try to maximize the entertainment factors so we hope to see some very very interesting picks as well as bands so take it away the transition to our casters Grimro and Vulcan all right here we are for picks and bands with the MOC 12 I am Vulcan here with Grimro are you expecting anything exciting in this one Grimro oh absolutely memory of Kios 12 is much harder Vulcan you need more damage and more defense and most importantly though we have an insanely powerful memory of chaos buff focused around breaking so i think we might see a lot of focus on that definitely something we could see some different teams in absolutely so let's get right into it and our first ban from team one here is going to be imbibitor lude a very very good ban as the first side in memory of chaos 12 is insanely hard and fully vulnerable to imaginary weakness and of course imbibitor as we know is a bit of an imaginary beast yeah, he's, he's slipped off a little bit from people's eyes since the Jing Liu, but definitely a monster of a unit that is a threat to both teams. So definitely a very telegraphed pick on that one. Absolutely, definitely a very good band there. And okay, our other team here is firing off with a Jing Lu band, arguably the best damage dealer in the game right now. She's insane on side two, and she can even be played on side one as well here. So I think that's definitely a very nice safe band there from Moon and Dreamy. With that cleave, especially uh, super strong. And once again, one, another one of those safe units to band. And it means it's more exciting for us because we are going to get some different comps in these battles. Absolutely. Okay. So our first pick here on side one is going to be Bronya. Absolutely one of the strongest picks that can be brought out here. She enables so many crazy teams and is definitely one of the biggest amplifiers in terms of damage. Not too much to add to that one. Pretty self-explanatory. Yep. Okay. And oh my goodness, this is a massive influential pick here. Team 2 is taking Ting Yun and Pella, what I would consider two of the maybe strongest supports for this Memory of Chaos right away from Team 1 here. So this is really going to tip the scale in their favor from my perspective here, Vulcan. What do you think? Definitely. And two fantastic supports and Pella going to be super clutch with that strip as well. So definitely a good one to pick up, first of all, for both those reasons. All right. And the next pickup we have here, focusing in on the support still, Civil War particularly has in insane synergy with this memory of chaos buff allowing units to really shred through that break bar so a really good pickup don't you reckon Vulcan? definitely and we haven't really seen too much silver wolf action in these tournaments yet because she's always one of the first ones to get banned so definitely excited to see some action in this one our next ban is going to be CLA. Definitely a solid ban here. Another DPS ban here. Really trying to eliminate those strong DPS options. Sally, of course, is very good on side two. So eliminating her will seriously limit the roster. Definitely exciting for this one. Getting rid of Zilla means that we could be seeing action from my two favorite four-star quantum damage dealers. So we'll have to wait and see. Okay, now this ban is incredibly surprising from Pokey and Doggo. It's a bit of a sleeper pick and one that a lot of people underrate estimate, but they're banning Welt. 
Welt and Bruin May is possibly one of the craziest combos we've seen in this memory of Kios for people who have tried it out. So I'm not surprised to see them taking that away. Yeah, just absolute savage break combo, especially with this MOC buff. Yep, not interested in seeing those double delay action there. Okay, so we've got a, another continuation with our support picks here, Vulcan. We've got Hanya coming out here to really complete that support lineup here for our second team. Yeah, definitely a solid core setup. Now they're going to probably have to look to get their sustain units and then they can allocate towards maybe some four-star DPS if they have. Okay, Pokey and Doggo taking away Fushuan and Hua Hua here. Now this is a very tactical pick here from my perspective, Vulcan, because there's only three five-star healers in the game who are limited, and it's Fushuan, Hua Hua, and Luocha, and there's two now on the team one, meaning there's only one possible one for team two here. Do you think that's gonna tip the scales? I definitely think we will see a Luocha pick as a must, but definitely curious to see who they'll pick as their other sustained unit. Absolutely. The power level between these five-star healers is really not to be underestimated. And we do see them picking up the Luocha there. Team 1 might have taken that away if they weren't careful there, so locking that in, definitely smart. But a very shocking pick here. What I wasn't expecting, we see Sampo here. I am super excited for that Sampo pick. The Luocha was pretty telegraphed, but the Sampo, like I said, with banning all those DPS in the early stages, we're going to get some exciting battles in this one with some of these four-stars. I'm glad to see it. Okay, whoa! Oh, 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 team one picks Dan Heng, Wind, and QQ. Now, QQ is excellent on side two, but Dan Heng, Wind, I am very excited to see if he can pull out all the stops and put in a good performance here. Well, we have seen him in previous competitions and he has done some stuff, so I'm definitely keen on that. And as you know, I am a massive QQ fan, so glad to see her getting some action in this round as well. Okay, and we do see the second healer lock in here is going to be Bailu, and we've got an excellent DPS choice here for Zhui. So very exciting, but one thing I do want to highlight is Bailu doesn't have a cleanse, and both sides of this incredibly threatening MOC, you really want one, so that one might be a bit interesting to handle. Yeah, I was anticipating seeing maybe a Lynx in that place instead of Bailu, but we do have the Bailu there, and Zhui Yi, just a really cool four-star unit that we've had introduced into the game, so definitely keen to see what she can do in this one. Okay, and side one, I'm going to pick up their Ruan Mei they have access to. No surprises there, she's an absolute powerhouse, and it's going to finish out with Yu Kong here, which is very surprising given their DPS, but she is an excellent Harmony unit. It's going to be very interesting to see how they manage those skill points with Bronya. QQ and all the rest of their supports they have. Definitely, we'll have to see how they form their teams as well with these units, uh, but definitely an interesting pick and the Ruan May very, very solid, obviously. And of course, we've got our Ruan May lock-in for our team to here to complete the rosters. Okay, here we go. Team one, side one, we got God Doggos with the team of Ho Ho, Silver Wolf, Green Dan, and Yu Kong. Definitely keen to see what he brings to this battle. And we're going to kick it off, and he is going straight for the horse. I would have thought he would have tried to lock down the other enemy first, but it looks like he might just be letting him heal. What do you think, Rimo? Absolutely. I would have thought he would have targeted that healing guy down ASAP and ensured that he wouldn't be able to continually heal up throughout the fight. But it looks like God Doggos is just ignoring that incredibly threatening enemy who could pose a huge issue to his run duration and going straight for that horse. It seems like the strategy is let him heal up as much as he wants because as long as he's not putting damage into him, it doesn't really affect him. Get the horse out of the way and then shift the, the focus away after that. Looks of like he's course. going ham in on this Dan. His Dan is fully stacked. We've got the ult coming with the pen buff. Curious to see this damage come out. And it's 175k for an ultimate from that Dan. And that would be the reason he has brought Dan Hung into this battle. That is huge damage. An absolutely incredible showing just there. And he is making short work of that horse. Really not even needing that defense shred or uh, buff shred rather from Pella or Luocha there. Ignoring that mechanic of the fight. And he's just leaving that horse there. He's confident that his silver wolf, who I'm assuming is a break effect, is going to finish that enemy off, which is going to allow him to clear even faster. And perfectly timing it if he's on that break build with silver wolf to break the next enemy as well and get full full, full growth out of that uh, that entanglement. Absolutely, and I, I'm liking this team composition all of a sudden. No Luocha, no Pella, not needed. And he's completely ignoring the lifesteal effect of this enemy just by breaking him with Silver Wolf and timing. 
with his huge ultimate. It's like that one right there. And another 133k from Dan Hung. Dude, this guy, <laughs> this guy's gear is next level to be doing that kind of damage. Plus, he is getting heavily buffed, which also really does help. But it's great to see that we can get some of these lower tier units getting some really good play in these competitions. Absolutely, the break finishes that elite off, and we're onto side two here. Now, this side is normally very threatening because of Kafka and her dominate right there. But as you can see, Wawa makes short work of that, and literally no debuff in this entire fight is going to have any impact on their team, thanks to Wawa as such a powerful healer. Definitely, I think we're going to be looking at seeing how many cycles we can get this one down in. I'm curious to see if we can get any of those mega crits from Dan Hung with his ultimate. He is really stacked and playing this super well, and it looks like he's going that same strategy of ignoring the big guy, letting him do his healing while he's at full health so it doesn't have any effect on him, and just getting that Kafka down as quick as possible. Absolutely, and timing that Civil Wolf break does seem to be a massive part of his strategy as well here. Here comes the big ult, Vulcan. And there we go, 139. We did get the break in that one as well. So no Civil Wolf break coming out on Kafka for this one, but he was really going for that damage. So I guess you'll take anything you can get there. At 59% health, we are looking pretty good on this one. Absolutely. I think he just wanted to be energy efficient there, ensuring that he was able to line up that Yukon ultimate with the Dan Hang ultimate, so it makes a whole lot of sense there. He really does need to make sure he gets that big damage in when he can. Yeah, getting some decent damage out of that cycle buff as well. Dan Hung has his penetration, but he isn't unfortunately going to get it on his ultimate. It is going to be on a skill that he uses that penetration, so not max damage, but he's still going to be reasonable nonetheless. Gonna be going for a Yu Kong still here to take advantage of that penetration as well. Makes sense. How much is he gonna hit for? Okay, respectable 40k. That's not bad. Definitely taking Kafka down in pretty good time here. And opting to go for a basic attack there on Hua Hua. So things could get a little dicey here, Awoken. Great energy recovery here though, because the Hua Hua ult. Oh, close to getting the Silver Wolf. Not quite, but we do have Dan's ready. We've got the Yukong ready. Looks like we're going to do a non-penetration Dan ult, but knowing him, it is still around that 130k damage that he'll get out of this one. 116, quite respectable, nonetheless. Timing those ultimates very, very nicely, though, to take advantage of what was healing there. He got pretty low there. If it wasn't for using Yukong and Dan Hang's ultimate and now Silver Wolf, he'd be in a little bit of trouble here. So very, very skillful use of what was kit here. Definitely, and we're getting, we, we are getting a little bit low with that Yukong, dropping into red health, but we are okay. We're going to get that break here on Kafka with the Silver Wolf, just using the basic, saving those, those points. Could have moved and used a skill on the other guy, but I think we're just playing it safe here at the moment. We are stacked on skill points, ready to move into him. Absolutely. So looking like we're going to be relying on that quantum break here to take out the Kafka as that will save a little bit of damage, able to now quickly focus in on the new last remaining target here, try and get it into break range and try and take it as fast as possible to get a hopefully decent clear time here. And hopefully we don't waste too much of the cycle buff on Kafka damage and we didn't hit her with any of it, which was quite nice. We really want it all going in on that big guy now because it looks like the play is going to be get as much break on him as possible and break him before his next turn and then pretty much good to go from there absolutely oh there she goes Kafka taken out by that quantum entanglement there still Wolf really being incredibly valuable in this team depth shred breaks oh and even res penetration really really impressive showing from this silver wolf from my perspective Silver Wolf, always an amazing unit, and especially because he's gone with that whole single target focused team, it just makes Silver Wolf even more impactful in this one, amplifying that single target damage as much as possible. Um, and, you know, I thought that was a bit of an interesting one going in with all this single target damage, but he's played it super well. And here comes another Dan Hung ult. No penetration on it. No crit, unfortunately. Only getting the 34k. So that could have maybe helped him an extra cycle if that did crit, but probably would have been just not enough and the cycle buff and that quantum break are probably going to be what gets him across the line ah uh, absolutely looks like he's not going to get it done this cycle that is unfortunate because every cycle does count it looks like we're going to be lining up for a six cycle clear here trying to think of any way he might be able to get it done quicker gonna just throw out the yukong ultimate there no crit on that either so it's gonna unfortunately look like it's gonna be a six cycle here for god doggo here on side Definitely, and here comes the turn, and I'm assuming straight after this, we're going to get that break damage come through, 87k, and that is at the end. Okay, here we are with Team 2, Side 1, with Destiny running the team of Pella, Sampo, Ranme, and Locha. We have ourselves a Sampo carry. Let's get into it. 
Okay, now this is an insane team. Maybe even more insane than the one we just saw. But it actually looks pretty good to me, Vulcan, because we have all of the elements here on this team which are good at breaking all of the enemies we're against. We also have two ways to deal with this pesky life regenerating enemy, and we have 50% increased break efficiency, meaning we're gonna get a really fast break. We've already got an enemy broken. Yes, and, we, and we, we mentioned that we have all the ways to deal with him, yet we happen to just break the guy before he even summons his adds, and we've got the Locher ult ready to go ahead and strip that healing buff, so he is not gonna be an issue in this one, and the dude is so low already. Vulcan, he's almost already dead. Ruan may really made short work of him. Absolutely insane. He is going to go down here to this Sampo, who's about to get another break. Man, Sampo Savage with 124k on four targets, taking everyone out. I, Dude, the cycle, what happened even there? This team is insane. Oh my god, it's really showing the power of break. I think Ruan May is doing a lot of the heavy lifting here, but Sampo obviously insane in the break efficiency as well. These enemies just they don't have a chance. They don't have a break bar to speak of here. And we got Pella's ultimate on cue as well, so we're gonna have that extra death shred. Uh, and we're pretty much safe and set up. I was I was expecting interesting things coming into this, but this is this is going incredibly well. We're gonna strip that healing buff off the big guy, so that is no longer a threat, and all damage that we deal now counts because he ain't gonna heal it back. This is incredibly, incredibly fast so far. And this run May's damage from her break is actually crazy. And we're going to get some mass penetration here. So we've got Pella's Death Shred. We've got Ruan May's Res Shred. It's going to be wild. I'm very interested to see. Oh, okay, 70k from a Pella skill. Thanks to Ruan May's break there, Vulcan. And definitely no issues with the survival here with our Locher. Getting those heals off, just completely reliable. We're dealing enough damage. We've got things broken. There's no pressure coming out. It just comes down to how quickly can we knock these things off the table. Absolutely. So that cycle one was insane, but it does seem we're going a little bit slower here on side two here. So very interested to see what kind of a pace we're going to end up with. But that Sampo must be built with some serious break effect. With that that break there, I think it was 104k uh, on the total damage dealt, which is huge. And now we have that wind shear dot ready to tick. Absolutely, that's going to be doing massive damage here. And every time those enemies try and recover, they're going to take even more damage from Ruan Bay here. So keeping up the debuffs, and it's really going to come down to how quickly these enemies recover and how quickly we can break them again, it seems. Well, Pella getting super low at 438 health. That is not what you want to see. But we do have the Lurcher coming in with an actively used skill, which you don't normally see too much. Cycle buff coming in, doing some massive damage as well. And we're looking pretty safe. There comes that Windshear Dot at 58k on the trigger there. And we're looking really good to get it done this cycle with Sampo coming in here. Oh, absolutely. There's no way these guys are surviving. I was underestimating the damage of those dots, it seems. This is insane clear speed here from Team 2 side 1. Getting some amazing performance this round out of the two four-star wind units with Sampo this time, and previously we saw the Dan Hung. Oh, yes, absolutely. It's looking like it's going to be a very fast clear here, Vulcan, and it's going to be a three cycle. Now we roll into team one, side two with Mr. Pokey, one, running one of my favorite teams here with Bronya, Fushwin, Ronmei, and QQ. Keen to see how quick we can get this one done. Absolutely, we just saw the absolute dominance of Ruan Mei here, so it's time to side one here, team one, to put their Ruan Mei into effect here. It's gonna be down to the wire, whether or not they can claw back all that time that they missed out on on side one here with their Ruan Mei pick. Vulcan, do you think they can do it? I think they can. I, I'm just so excited. Every time I see QQ in these tournaments, I'm excited. That one, we got it. We got the we got the two flip into the follow up, which is super fantastic. Great RNG to kick it off. The RNG of this is just so exciting too. Absolutely. So we do already have an enemy broken there, thanks to Ruan Mei and excellent type coverage here from Mr. Pokey. But that Fushuan is taking some pretty serious damage there. Already having to use one of the recoveries there, but the enemies are falling quick as well. Here. But it's not looking like it's going to be a zero cycle here. Yeah, and, and taking a bunch of damage, but the good thing is with this one and the way we're working, especially with the Ruan Mei, is we should buy ourselves enough time for that Fushuan to get enough stacks back up as we demolish them both with QQ into the beetle. Here we go. 
That actually was a zero cycle deck. Very, very nicely played. I thought there was no way we were getting a zero cycle deck. But Mr. Pokey pulls it out, so we are very much on track for a great neck clear speed here. Yeah. How fast can he get through this true sting? That's really going to depend on QQ, I think, Vulcan. Take away. Definitely. He nailed that RNG in the first round. Unfortunately, not proccing the follow up attack on this one. But we do have the Bronya to give her another turn. Can we get it in three skill points? We need it on this flip, and he gets the follow up attack. Attack. That is just about a perfect play from QQ. 201k into 196k into the bugs blowing up. This is some insane damage and some crazier RNG. Now, what I'm very interested to see is can he burn this bug down before he has to use the Memory of Chaos Blessing here? If he can get the life bar down here and take it out, then that Memory of Chaos Blessing will go on the final life bar, which would be huge for his clear speed potential here, Vulcan. Well, this is going to be it. We got QQ into Bronya. We've got the QQ ult as well. He decides to get rid of one. Now he has the ult and the enhanced. Unfortunately, he didn't get to do any flips into this, so it's going to sacrifice a bit of damage. He doesn't have the follow up attack, but that oh. ult doing 124k into 139k with a no flip basic. This is insane damage. That is huge. That number of Chaos Blessing is going to rip this field apart here. Very, very nice. Those ads are almost already dead. That is a huge benefit there. And he only has one life bar to get through. And he's only used one cycle here. Definitely. And those bugs just are ready to explode on the next enhanced basic. And that's just going to snowball the damage even further. Absolutely, five skill points in the tank as well. I'm curious, Vulcan, is he going to use the QQ's enhanced basic attack twice here, or is he going to use a normal basic and then throw on your boost into that enhanced? I, I, it depends how much of a gambler he is. He only, he's only going to have three flipped. If he gets two of a kind, maybe he considers this. Otherwise, he's probably just going to throw one away. So he's got three odds. He's going all in for broke here. He's got the follow-up attack. Can he get it on this one? He's got follow-up attack plus four stacks on the flips. Going into 222, into 189k. He can just boost a normal basic into this one now if he wants, or just straight up basic. Absolutely. This is an insane performance. He's going to one cycle side two here. That is nuts. <laughs> All right, here we are with a team two, a side two. We have Dreamy running the team of Zhui, Hanya, Tingyun, and Bailu. Definitely keen to see the new four star in action, both of the new four stars, actually. And we get to see the full potential here. This is an E6 Shui, which is very exciting. He already has access to that ultimate here. Who is it going to be used on, though? Okay, straight for the Quantum Weak enemy, instantly breaking them into a massive follow-up here. Very, very nice. 63k into 59k into a 45k skill. This is some really solid damage and a great showcase at that. Absolutely, but there is no more quantum weakness for Shui to get any more damage for that follow-up right now. So we're going to have to wait for that enemy to recover to really get that follow-up attack churning again. That's my only thing, which I'm wondering, what is the plan here for that? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not too sure, but dude, I, I'm just really impressed with what we've seen so far. That, that damage potential, already got that boss at around 35% health, is quite insane. Absolutely. We need a really fast clear time here, though, to match what we just saw. Bailu bringing out the ultimate here. No danger at the moment here. And it doesn't look like we're going to get a zero cycle like Pokey did, but this is pretty impressive nonetheless, considering we don't have one May on this team. Definitely no Ruan May and also no Silver Wolf. This team with a Silver Wolf would have been perfectly poised uh, to perform a lot better teaming up with that Zhui Yi, but still doing wonders with this damage on what's available. 120k there between the ultimate and follow-up is very, very respectable. Absolutely getting really big value out of that Memory of Chaos Blessing. Oh, and finishes off one enemy straight into the other. We're looking like we're going for that one cycle here, Vulcan, which is very impressive, honestly. Very impressive, considering we've got three four-stars and a base build five-star for the healer. This is a very impressive work. Absolutely. Okay, so are we going to be able to round this out with one final Shui skill? That is going to be the question here, Vulcan. I'm pretty confident it's going to happen here. Go for basic there. Okay, that's very confident. Expecting more damage. Can we knock it out with the basic from the Ting Yun? Okay, that was perfectly planned. That is actually incredible calculation there. Getting two free skill points for essentially nothing. I'm actually super impressed right now.
Okay, uh, this is where you're like, do you use that ultimate and waste all that extra energy, saving the ultimate, waiting until after we get the first ult from Zhuayi, and then going to put it into the next one. It's always a tricky decision with that Ting Yun when you got an ally at about 95% energy. Oh, okay, Shui, you're going very low here. Gonna be using that by the ultimate, but those wind shears are gonna prove to be a bit of an issue here if we don't start breaking this enemy quick because we have no cleanses on this team, right, Vulcan? Definitely, and there we go. We're gonna get the next ultimate in here, dealing 70k into a 52k follow-up, looking real good. Then we go straight into the boost, uh, and we're already at about 60, 70%. Actually getting hit, if we can survive those wind shears, taking the damage by Shui isn't too bad to get that extra energy as well. Absolutely, we are looking to get a break real soon though, so we can start buff, um, stacking up that Memory of Chaos buff here. We're only at two stacks currently, uh, so we do want to see that Shui can she get some breaks here on these ads. That'd be ideal. Definitely, we'll see. We'll see right here because we're going to go straight into an ultimate as well. Get the burst, get the burst. Love that snowball happening. And here we go, the ultimate. Sick animations from these two new four stars, by the way. 94k, looking fantastic, into an 89k follow-up. We have got damage out the wazoo for this one. Absolutely. Getting to seven stacks, which is a good amount. Hopefully, this is going to be able to take it out. Oh, oh just Left at 5%, so close. But I have been absolutely impressed with this run. Looking real solid, down to 1%. Can we finish it off with a basic from Bailu? No, <laughs> we can't. It would have been exciting, Hopefully, but there we go. Take it up. Oh, there we go. Okay, okay. now Hopefully. we've got the second phase. Now, that damage, I'm hoping we can keep that sort of damage coming out because that was absolutely insane. We do have the adds. We do have those wind shears. Once again, to worry about Bailu is stacked with that ult, so at least we are looking safe for some survival here. We do have a big problem though, Vulcan, and I'm very interested how this is going to get handled. That bug on the left here, if not dealt with before the enemy is dead, will have a chance to stun your entire team. So do you think we're going to go for a priority on that, or are we going to focus straight on the boss? We'll have to see, because there we go, you called it precisely, because yeah, we don't have break for it, so we just have to go straight for the kill. Absolutely, yep. It's going to be a big priority there. Bailu, unfortunately, no cleanse, so it's going to have to be that way there. But taking it out with just one ultimate there, not too much of it. Definitely, and, and just correcting myself, that is the beauty behind the Zhuayi. The ult does put break into anything, so we didn't even have to get the kill because we did get the break on that one as well. Yep, really showing her stuff here. And also her follow-up attack ignores that weakness, toughness, vulnerability as well, thanks to those Eidolons. We're seeing a lot of ads here though, and the boss is now enraged. So if it does its next ability here with those ads up, we're gonna be in some trouble here. Let's see, let's see. So we've got Zhuayi coming up now. We're close to ult, so we're going to go skill into ult. We've got Ting Yun very, very close to her ultimate as well, which should come after a basic. But when are we going to have enough to get a break? We do have the snowball coming with the exploding bugs, which is definitely very helpful. And now this is this is the moment of the truth. We've got Bailu coming up next. I'm tipping we're going to want to get topped off with this Bailu, though. I'm thinking a Bailu skill here might be good. Yep, absolutely. An excellent play here. That is not going to be a problem now. That enemy has no adds, so they're not going to do too much damage, even though it looks pretty scary. Definitely. So that was that was really solid with the Bailu. We're looking pretty safe now. It's just a matter of can we get it done in this cycle? We do have one more Shui attack. We're going to get that boost. So we should do a skill into a follow-up into an ultimate, which could be enough damage to get it done. Absolutely. If we could get a quantum break, that would also be huge, as we would also get a bit of extra damage from that. It's really going to come down to the wire, though, I think, Vulcan. Ho, ho. 81k into 95k. We get the exploding bug into the ultimate. Can we get the damage? We got the 103k crit to get it done. And congratulations to the winners. Well played, well played. Honestly, that was such a blast to watch. And of course, the new Memory Chaos 12 was extremely, extremely difficult. So it's really, really awesome to see some of the picks as well as the bands coming out. And uh, yes, we definitely, definitely got to see some very interesting team compositions. But again, huge shout out to everyone that participated as well. Um, so well, well done. And let me know your thoughts on the PvP Cup and what you would like to see. And of course, we also know we have pure fiction in the uh, current patch update so uh, potentially we could also look into hosting pvp content for that as well but anyhow it's tomorrow's here and thanks again vulcan for hosting this video and i will see you guys in the next one goodbye now